Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Welcome to this Premiere Pro and video editing tutorial. This is the effect we're creating today. But we're gonna do our own little take on this effect. It's super cool and if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit the little red button. Subscribe to this channel so you never miss another video tutorial in the future. And if you really love the video, well you can pick up my Photoshop course. The link will appear up there and there's also a link down in the bio as well. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. So if you pick up a copy of that, thank you so much. Let's get the tutorial started. All right, so here we are in Premiere Pro and really all you need is two video clips. In fact, I will close and I will delete this particular sequence because I'll show you how to do it soup to nuts. Get your two video clips, we'll right click on this video clip and choose to create a new sequence from clip. You see that new sequence from clip? That's right, places the video clip right in there and we've got the guy on the horse. I'm gonna set my zoom level here to fit so we can see the entire uh, frame. Not the highest quality piece of video, but you know, it works for our purposes. And next up, we want to go with this other video clip which I'm just going to drag into here. And I think I'll drop it right here. I'll just butt the two clips together. And what we'll have to do is just, you know, well, you can see the video is going to swap back and forth. Great. Uh, let's go ahead and create a uh, an adjustment layer. However, first, take note, the name of our uh, sequence is just the name of this Cowboy Horse Monument Valley video clip. So we should probably change the name of that so we can just, you know, slowly double click on that. We can just call this, you know, rolling uh, transition or something. So I'll slide back down here. I'll probably even drag that over. And by the way, I know that this is the sequence because it has a little sequence icon and not like a video clip uh, icon like that. All right, so that is our sequence. Great. And you can see the name automatically updates rolling transition. Anyway, what we want to do, come down here and choose the new item button. And we're going to choose adjustment layer. So throw an adjustment layer in here and it just gives us some information. Yep, that's all great. Go with that adjustment layer. And now I'm going to right click on this adjustment layer and I'm going to choose speed duration because I'm going to set the sort of speed and duration of this adjustment layer before I even place it on the timeline. So we'll go speed duration and I want the duration of this to be 60 frames. So I'm going to select duration. I'm just going to type the number 60 and it's automatically going to say two seconds and 12 frames. Great. I'm going to hit OK. That is now reflected down there in that little timestamp in the bottom of the adjustment layer. And I'm going to drag it out and place it roughly halfway. Uh, so it's kind of straddling the, the, the area where these two clips butt together, right? The sort of seam of the two clips. And to make this effect happen, we're going to select the adjustment layer and we're going to apply some effects to this adjustment layer that kind of take place over the course of these 60 frames and oh by the way the transition between our two video clips is happening underneath these effects that we're going to sort of pour on top of them so click right on the adjustment layer and we can look up here in our effect controls panel and see we really don't have anything the motion and opacity we haven't done anything there and we surely haven't added any effects to the adjustment layer yet so let's get started with that come over here and select the effects panel and I'm going to come down here and open up video effects I'm going to go under distort and I am going to choose offset. I'm just going to drag and drop it up here in the effect controls panel. You could also drag and drop it directly on the adjustment layer out here. So either or works. And now you can see we have offset and we have this option to shift the center to a different point. I don't really want to shift the X axis. We're going to shift along the Y axis and I'm going to just pull it way over. We want this to almost be like, you know, it's going to be sort of this rolling effect. So we're going to go way over. We're going to go 7,000, maybe like 7,024 maybe. That should line us up almost exact as it should be or so. So we'll go 7,024. But what I need to do so it looks like something is changing and spinning is we need to create an animation here. So at the beginning of our adjustment layer, somewhere around here, we don't we want the 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 Y here to be just the it's its default. And we want it to race up to the 724 by the time it gets out over, well, not over here, but over here to the sort of end of our adjustment layer. So what I'm gonna do is with this now set to 7024, I am going to click on this little stopwatch icon. That's going to toggle the animation on and drop a keyframe near the end of our adjustment layer. I can just manually drag it and it'll snap to the end of the adjustment layer like that. Now what I'll do is come back here, again, just close to the front of the adjustment layer, and I will hit this reset parameter arrow, and that's gonna automatically drop another keyframe. You can see it set the Y back to 540. I can drag this all the way to the beginning, and there we go. And what I wanna do now is drag a selection out, or just well, select the first keyframe, hold down shift, and select the last keyframe. They're kinda close to the edge, so it's a little difficult to select them. Then right click, temporal interpolation, and we're gonna ease these in. You could ease in, you could ease out, both look pretty good. Um, I just have found that I tend to prefer the ease in. So now if we play through this video and just see what happens, we can see that we've got this kind of crazy effect happening. Pretty cool. Now it still might be a little bit too slow. And if it is too slow, no worries. 
All we need to do is pull these keyframes inward a little bit. So shorten the duration of the actual animation and speed up the spinning effect. Let's see what this does here. So we can see, boom, then it hits and it does this spinning thing and lands right on this frame. Great. Now, I don't know if you see this, but it looks like up here at the top, we, we sort of overextended pixel wise. It maybe is 7,022 pixels or something. So we can select that adjustment layer and we need to get ourselves exactly onto this keyframe right here. The way we're going to do that is by by using the next or previous keyframe arrows right here and it's going to get me exactly to that keyframe and I'll just manually punch in 7022 and that looks like that's probably about right so let's just watch through that and we can see it lands and that looks much better maybe it still needs to be adjusted a little bit but we'll, we'll play with that in a little bit now what we want to do is add some blur to this so as this transition takes place I mean really as it is you could leave it you could well you know what it probably even needs to be sped up a little bit more let's speed it up even more let's see bam just like that so you can see that's kind of this cool almost rolling shutter transition that's one way you can do this we can take it a step further by adding a motion blur to this so let's uh, close up distort here and let's add a blur a directional blur to this adjustment layer so there we go I drop it on the adjustment layer and uh, let's set the blur length to something pretty extreme let's go like 200 you can see it gives us this crazy effect but of course I don't want the whole clip to just be blurred because let me just play through this and you'll see as soon as we hit that uh, adjustment layer the whole uh, bit of footage just goes blurry what I want is I want this blur to maximize at 200 in terms of blur length at sort of the crescendo the middle point or maybe a little past the middle point of the uh, this whole offset effect taking place. So what I'm going to do here is here on blur length is I'm going to drop or I'm going to toggle the animation to drop a keyframe right about in between those keyframes. In fact, maybe I'll drag it a little bit closer to where this whole thing stops, right? And then I will use the next and previous keyframe buttons up here on offset. So go to the next keyframe and then down here under directional blur, I will just simply use the reset parameter arrow to get rid of all the blur here by the time we're kind of finishing up that rolling shutter effect. Then I'm going to go, uh, whoops, I'm going to undo that. I accidentally hit the remove keyframe button. I want to go to the previous keyframe. There we go. So we're lined up exactly with that. And we will also just hit this reset parameter button. So all the blurring will begin as soon as the rolling shutter effect begins. And it will, you know, completely go back to normal as the offset effect finishes. So let's just watch through it. Boom, you can see that's exactly what it looks like. Pretty cool. Uh, I think I maybe want to elongate this effect. So in this case, I will select both of these outside keyframes on one side, and I'll just move them back a little bit, and I'll select both the outside keyframes on the other side and extend them a little bit. Now I can watch through it, and I can see, voila, there we go. Now what I also want to do, I want to select all of these blur keyframes down here, and I want to set these to ease in. So right-click, ease those puppies in, and let's just check this out. Voila, just like that. So we get this really cool rolling shutter effect. And that's really the second way you can you can play with this effect, or really at this point you could stop with the effect. But one way that I found adds a little bit more realism to this kind of like, you know, very fast uh, effect is to add a little bit of grain. Because when, when you're really blurring your footage this much, it just tends to smooth everything out a little bit too much. So what I want to do is come down here to my effects and go to the noise and grain folder. And I'm going to choose noise alpha in this case. And what I'll do is set the amount of noise to about 5%. And you can play around with your the random speed and even the noise options under animation if you like. You can even change the type of noise. Maybe I'll go uniform animation in this case. And we will now have some noise. The problem is obviously uh, the noise is going to appear as soon as the adjustment layer pops up. So we need to apply the same kind of a keyframing that we did here with our directional blur. So let's do that. Let's use, uh, let's actually open up directional blur so we can use our next previous keyframe buttons. And I'm going to go to the middle keyframe where the blur is at its height. That's also where we would like the noise to be at its height. And I'm going to keyframe the amount of noise since that's what I'm working with. And then I'll come up here to the directional blur. I'll go to the next keyframe and I will just simply reset the amount of noise. And then I will go back, back, previous, previous keyframe, and I'll reset the noise there as well. And I'll select these three keyframes, right click, and we can ease this in as well. It's going to be very difficult to notice the difference. Uh, but then if we play through, now we have a nice just sort of additional texture that's going to be added as this blurring happens uh, just to keep it from appearing too smooth.
So that's cool. We've got two different ways to do a rolling transition and build it out. But let's talk about a third way that we can really add something pretty cool to this. So let's come back to the project panel here. And I want to come down here to the new item button and choose to add a color mat. All right. Now the color mat can be any color you like. We're going to hit OK. It can be any color you like. I think I'm just going to roll with black because it's just it's, it's easy. And the name for this mat is going to be a mask hyphen animator. There we go. And you can see I've got it called mask animator. Animator. And what I'm going to do is I can really drag this out anywhere. In fact, I'm going to drag it out here to work on it. And if I just hover over this, we can see that it's it's a simple black mat. It's covering our entire footage with just a black frame. Not very helpful, I know. Uh, but what we need to do is we're going to create a series of three masks. And we're going to be able to get exact shapes by using a color mat here. So check this out. With your um, color mat selected, we'll come over here to the Effect Controls panel. Check this out. And we're going to open up a motion here and we have this scaling option. But if I toggle down on scale here, in fact, I don't even have to toggle down on scale. I don't know why I said that. We can just uncheck uniform scale and we can simply scale the width to 33.3% and you can see it gives us a black chunk right down the middle. Now, I really want this to be the mask that's going to animate down over here on the left side of the video. So how do I move it over? Well, we need to change the the positioning, I'm sorry, the X position, not the Y positioning of this, uh, this clip or this color mat really. If I come up here and I select this little icon, it's going to show me that the anchor point Point, sort of the positioning point, the point from which our scaling and positioning is going to take place is in the exact middle of this color mat, right? So if I just say, oh, well, this is easy. I set it to zero and zero and it'll take that top, that top left corner and align it with the zero. Well, let me show you what happens. It doesn't happen. It takes that center anchor point and puts that up there. So I'm going to command or control Z a couple times to undo that. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how far over this needs to be moved. So the first equation is going to be the width of your frame divided by three and then divide that number in half. So we know our frame is 1920 pixels wide, so we're gonna divide that by three, and then we're gonna divide that number, which is 640 by the way, we're gonna divide that number by two, which gives us 320. So if I say, all right, change this from 960 to 320, you can see, boom, it lines it up perfectly. All right, great. I wanna drag out another one of this uh, color mat right down here, and we need to talk about where it's going to be positioned. So I'm thinking uh, in terms of the way we position these, well, we should probably actually figure out how the positioning goes later. Let's Let's just get them all lined up uh, the way we need them to be lined up for now. So I'm going to just drag this mask over. I think it'll, I'm just, as I think about it, I think it'll be easier to understand if we do the animation first and then we figure out the exact timing. So you can see the second uh, color mat comes in. It's full just like before. So first thing we'll do, come up to scale, uncheck uniform scale, set the width 33.3. Boom. This one, well, it's just going to live right there in the middle. In fact, if you wanted to make this one just a tiny bit wider, I guess you could. You could take it up to like 34 just to make sure there was nothing you could see. Um, I'm just going to kind of stick with with 33.3 because I'm recording this and, and I don't want anything to go wrong. But you can play with it and just see what, what gets it done for you. Great, so we got our second one. Let's drag another color mat. We can drag it up here. It'll automatically create a new video track for us. And in this case, once again, we filled everything in, but we need to select this color mat. And I'm going to uncheck uniform scale. We're gonna set this to 33.3. It downsizes it right to the middle, so it's exactly on top of the sort of the center mask animator, which is this one right here in the middle. I want the one on top here. This one needs to be moved over to the right. So once again, we need to adjust the positioning here. And the equation for this is the frame, which again, 1920 divided by three. And then we're going to take that number, which is 640, and we're going to multiply it by two and a half. So where do I get that number from? Well, I already have one of these shapes. I have two of these shapes. And that position point is right split exactly halfway down the middle of this third shape. So that's two and a half. So 640 times 2.5 is 1600. So if I set this to 1600, you can see, voila, there we go. We have our three shapes and they're exactly in position. So now we'll create the actual animation. So we're going to come over here to effects and I'm going to just go, I think I'm just going to go to the regular video transitions. I'm going to close that video transitions here. Let's go to wipe and let's just give each of these a simple wipe right at the beginning of the mask or right at the beginning of the color mat. Technically, it's not a mask yet. So I'm going to drag a wipe out onto each of these. And I think what I'll do, you can see just a simple wipe, boom, 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 like that. Not too bad, but I think I want like maybe the, the two outside ones to come down from the top and the one in the middle to come up from the bottom. So let's select wipe. I selected the wipe transition here on the bottom a color mat. And all I need to do is come over here and choose this little arrow north to south. See that? So I click that and now that wipe is going to come down from the top. You see that? 
voila. All right, we'll select the second wipe. We'll just make this one come up from the bottom. Great, and we'll select the third wipe, and we'll make that puppy come down from the top. So if I play through this now, down, up, down, perfect and it begins to disappear, but we need to figure out the timing now. So let's use the plus key, we'll zoom in on this a little bit. And I think what I'm gonna do is move right to the very first frame of this, uh, this bottom mask animator. And maybe let's give these, I don't know, what do you think? Seven frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll give them seven frames of head start. And because of that, I think I wanna drag the actual wipe transition back. So the wipe transition will have finished one, you know, and, and be sitting there for one frame by the time the second wipe begins. So once more, we'll use the right arrow key. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great. Let's drag the top. Uh, let's drag the top color mat over. Let's drag the wipe back. There we go. And then just to get the wipe timing correct, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'll drag that back just like that. Now I'm going to zoom out. And what I need to do here is just pull and extend the color mat so they all line up here at the end. You can see these are all just solid black. So now we've created what's going to be our mask and we're gonna convert it to a mask by just selecting all three of these. We're gonna right click and I'm gonna to choose to nest these little clips that we just did this animation job on. And I'm gonna call this, you know, mask because this is really gonna be our mask. And over here we can see we have a new a nested sequence called mask. I'm gonna zoom out on my timeline using the minus key and uh, let's drag this mask up above our adjustment layer here. Now what I want to do is I want my animation to begin kind of, uh, my mask animation that is, I want it to begin kind of when the animation is going to begin down here on the adjustment layer. So what I'll do is select the adjustment layer and I can open up any of these. I'll just open up offset and I'll use that next previous keyframe button, next keyframe. It's going to take me to the first keyframe right there. So I know that right there is where I want my mask to begin, right? That's where I want that animation to begin. And once I've done this, all I need to do is instruct my adjustment layer to use this mask as a mask. So we're going to do that by coming over to effects. Let's just collapse video transitions. Go back to video effects. We're going to come down here to keying and we're going to choose track mat key right there. Voila. Drag that onto the adjustment layer. And over here you can see there's track mat key. All we need to do is tell it to mat using video four, or I'm sorry, video three. Video four, that track is empty. Our mask is sitting over here on video three. So we want to use video three as the mat. I'll back this up. Let's just try playing through it we can see exactly what effect we get. Now the one thing that I'll probably do is I want to make sure that the video switch over happens when the mask is completely covering everything up. So I'll probably right there is probably where I want the, the mat, or I'm sorry, the, the like right here where the playhead is, right? That's really where I want this cut in the clip to be. So I'm gonna slide these guys back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe. Let's see what that looks like. We can see, well, I moved it back a little bit too much, maybe nudge it two. If we play through it, yeah, there we go. We get a much smoother transition to the video. So let's just play through it here and see what it looks like. There we go. You can see it just pulls the whole video right together. And we get sort of this one, two, three masking effect with this cool rolling shutter effect. Uh, and it's all pretty easy to do. It took a little bit to explain, but once you kind of have it down, uh, you got it down and you can do it. And it's, it's, a, it's a really cool effect and you can take it as far or, you know, not as, you know, not as far as I did or take it further for all I care. Uh, but guys, that's really going to be it for this one. If you did enjoy it, well, again, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you never miss another video in the future. And for creating this rolling shutter effect, really three different rolling shutter effects here in Premiere Pro. And so so much more. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds in Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.